We're talking beans, and I mean lots of them, coming up next. I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to Garden to Table. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, beans. I love to grow them and I really love to eat them. In fact, I'm standing out in a 65-acre field in the Mississippi River Basin. These are soybeans. Fascinating plant. I mean, think about it. They produce fuel, food, even soap, and you can make furniture from soybeans. Now, coming up in the show, I'll share with you a black soybean hummus recipe that makes a healthy and delicious snack. Even Lori Moore will stop by to prepare some of her fantastic chickpea salad sandwiches. Later, we'll go out to the garden to check out one of my favorites, asparagus beans. Well, as you can see, we have a lot to cover in today's show, so why don't we get started right here with the soybeans, because farmers are in the middle of the harvest season. Well, the wind has certainly picked up out here. It rained yesterday, and that's a good thing because it'll dry out the ground because it's time to harvest these beans. You can see they're completely defoliated, and you can see the pods of the soybeans hanging on the plants. You know, soybeans have been grown in this country for a long time. In fact, they were first introduced to America in Savannah in 1765, and the sailor that brought them from China actually began to manufacture a soybean sauce that was sold to England. Now, a lot has changed here in this country since they were first introduced. The United States is one of the top producers of soybeans in the world. And in fact, now, we're not just producing soy sauce, there are probably, well, over 1,600 different applications for soybeans. These little beans have a lot packed in them. You see they can produce up to 18 to 19 percent oil and 35 to 40 percent protein. One of the obvious uses of soybeans is the fact that you can produce vegetable oil for cooking, but you can also use that same oil for fuel and even foam insulation for making our houses much more energy efficient. And then there's the whole protein component. Amazing amounts of protein in these beans. Most of them are used for feeding livestock and poultry. It's a fascinating plant to grow. In fact, I grow soybeans in my garden because I love to eat the fresh green beans that you find in these little pods. But in this field, this particular kind, which is grown for the dried bean, which is about to be harvested, these are planted and are mature within about 130 to 150 days. Now with the harvest season on us, this 65 acre field will yield about 50 bushels per acre. That's a lot of beans. Over the years, I've grown to love hummus of any kind. It's a great snacking food. I love to have it around for parties. And you know, there's lots of different ways to approach hummus. The traditional approach is to use chickpeas. But what I wanna do is show you a recipe using black soybeans. They're so delicious. And you can buy them dried and you can soak them and cook them, but these are actually canned black soybeans and they really do have a marvelous flavor. And this makes this recipe so easy if you just buy them by the can. This recipe makes enough for about four or five people. It depends on how hungry they are. You may need to make a double batch. It's that good. Now what I've done is just crushed a clove of garlic and I'm gonna throw it here in the food processor. First thing you wanna do is kinda of get the garlic and the beans working together. So I'm taking the beans, 15 ounce can of beans, in here, that equals about, well, almost uh, two cups. Get those in there like that. And we'll just puree those together. It's looking pretty good. I want a finer texture. It's still pretty coarse, so let's pop this in here and give it another whirl. Now this may appear a little dry, 
but we're gonna add some liquid ingredients in just a moment, which will bring it to the exact consistency that you want and the consistency we've come to expect in hummus. You just wanna make sure that the garlic is fully integrated into those beans, okay? All right. So I'm gonna add these other ingredients. I'm gonna take a half a teaspoon of salt, and I have sriracha sauce, which is made from sun-dried chilies. Yummy stuff. It takes just a little. I'm using one teaspoon of this fiery stuff. This will give it a little heat. And then I have some tahini. I have a tablespoon and a half of tahini. And that's made from pureed toasted sesame seeds. Yummy stuff. Push all that around like this. And then I'm gonna blend it again. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Off, push back down a little bit. So this base recipe makes really thick hummus. So you may wanna add a little more tahini that will make it a little more creamier, and you can also add a little water. And now I'm ready to pour the hummus in this bowl in the center of this platter of pita chips. It just folds out like this. It looks beautiful. I wish you could smell it. It's really it's a wonderful aroma to it. I just set that down. And then you just want to garnish it with a little paprika like this. And then I always like to take some parsley just to green it up a little bit. Just break up some parsley leaves like this. Decorate the top. And you're ready for guests. This is really good. You should give this recipe a try. Mm. Black soybeans. Who'd have ever thought? You, know, you can buy peas, for instance, fresh fresh shelled, you can buy them in a can, or you can buy them dried like this. Um, and sometimes you'll find that recipes ask for dried beans. You can apply these principles to cook them. What I like to do is just take them and wash them off, because sometimes when they come from the mill, you may find a stick, maybe even a stone in there, and I just like to wash the dust off of them. Now the other reason I like to use these dried beans is that from a standpoint of fresh or frozen or canned, they're often less expensive. And there are two methods for soaking them and getting them ready for cooking. One of them is, is a fast method and the other one is much slower. And what I'm doing here is just showing you how you simply get these ready for the slow method. And that's just soak the beans in room temperature water. You just wanna cover the beans about two inches of water above them, and just let them sit overnight. And what happens is the bean hydrates. But when the bean is fully hydrated, it cooks much faster. All right, so this is the slow approach to soaking dried beans or peas. Now let's talk about one that you can do in an hour. So you got one that takes a day, and you have one that takes an hour. With this method, I've washed the beans, you can see here, and I'm just pouring them into this stew pot and you need to have a lid ready. And all I'm gonna do is take some water, cover the beans, just cover them with water, like that. Okay, so now all you do is you're gonna turn on the stove to medium heat, you're gonna let the peas come, or the beans, whatever you're cooking, come to a boil, and immediately just turn off the heat, get it off the heat, and then put a lid on it, and let it sit for an hour. So what happens here is the beans are rehydrating and this just accelerates that process from 12 hours or overnight to just one hour. And by rehydrating a bean like this, a dried bean, you um, cut the cooking time by 70%. So it's a handy little tip to know. I was looking for a restaurant 
I said, I have had a, a sit down restaurant and it, the overhead can be a little overwhelming at times, but with the food truck, it's just, you know, you don't have that huge commitment and you can pick up and leave. If you know, you've heard location, location, location. Well, if you don't like your location, you pick up and you pull your location around the corner. And the reason I did a vegetarian food truck is because I became a vegetarian a few years ago and I was having trouble finding lunch options to eat. Today we're gonna to be making our vegan chickpea salad. This is one of my favorite dishes to make because of the simplicity of it. I'm gonna take all of our ingredients here, which I'll go over with you in a minute, and just throw it in the food processor and that's all you have to do. First of all, we start out with 16 ounces of cooked chickpeas. Now I like to use the cooked chickpeas because I think they have a better flavor. What I do is I will soak the chickpeas the night before for approximately eight hours, and then I, I will cook them for probably about 30 minutes. Now what I like to do is I add a little bit of ginger to the chickpeas because that kind of helps with some of the uh, of unpleasantries that you sometimes get with uh, beans, but that helps that. So then you cook for about 30 minutes, and then we, we've added them here, and then we add two stalks of chopped celery. And we have our little secret spice here that actually is just some cayenne, salt, pepper. We add three quarters of a teaspoon of that. We have one tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice. A little over a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. We have our tarragon. Tarragon is, it's dried tarragon. It kind of gives it a little mild licorice flavor. It's very mild. And then we have a cup of veganaise. And the reason I'm using veganaise today is because we are a vegetarian food truck, but I also like to have some vegan options. And veganaise is a dairy-free, egg-free mayonnaise substitute. So we take all these ingredients, just throw them in the food processor, and then we'll pulse it for approximately 10 to 15 times. And you can check it to see if it's the consistency that you like. I like it to be a little chunky on the consistency side, but it's not quite there, so we're gonna push it down a little bit and probably pulse it for about five more times. That's how simple it is. It's just a nice little refreshing salad sandwich. You know, I'm throwing together some lentil soup. I love lentils because they're a great source of protein. And this soup is so easy to make and I'm just sort of making it up as I go. I went over to the pantry and found some canned tomatoes and so forth. I just want to show you how I cook with lentils. And uh, you don't have to soak them in water, but I think that it, they actually cook a little faster if you do. And I have two pounds of lentils here that I've been soaking for about an hour. And I'm just gonna rinse them and they'll be ready to throw into this pot. It only takes about 35 minutes to cook them until they're tender. And I'm just going to rinse them off like this. And while these drain, I'm going to show you what I'm going to throw in this container over here. In this uh, stock pot, uh, what I'm going to do is use about a fourth of a cup of olive oil. Just pouring that in now. And then I'm going to saute about three cups of celery. I've just been chopping it coarsely chopped, and one yellow onion. You can see I'm just chopping it coarsely. This is a very rustic soup. So uh, I've got some of the basics going here. Let me go ahead and get the olive oil started here. Okay, so now I'm ready to just throw all this into the, into the pot. And I'm going to saute this until it softens just a bit and the onions become clear. And uh, this is a lot of soup because I'm using two pounds of lentils, but this is such an affordable soup to make and it's great for winter or fall, uh, really any time of the year, particularly when it's cold outside. Get this all in here. I don't want to waste any of it at all. 
Just take the spoon here and stir it around. Now you can be creative with this basic recipe. You can do lots of different things. Just, you know, you can add meat, you can add beef tips if you want to, you can use chicken. This recipe that I'm creating today is all vegetarian because I'm using vegetable stock instead of chicken stock, but you could use beef or chicken stock. Oh, and I almost forgot the garlic. I've got about um, four tablespoons of garlic here that I'm gonna add, crushed garlic. Might even add more garlic. I love the way garlic tastes. And we're gonna let this cook for about three more minutes. Yeah, this is coming along just fine. While we let this cook, let's jump over here and take a look at the herbs. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some parsley. And um, this does so well in my garden in the winter. However, I usually like to cook with flat leaf Italian, but I'm using some curly parsley because it was, it was uh, close to the house. I didn't have to go very far. And then I'm gonna use some thyme. And um, I love the flavor of fresh thyme. So this came out of the garden and I'm just gonna strip the leaves at the time off like this. It just adds such a wonderful flavor. I wish you could smell the aroma coming off of these stems. Now you can see this is a woody herb and so uh, you, wanna, you don't want to get those little woody stems in there. That's why I'm just peeling back the little tiny leaves and they're falling here on my cutting board. What I'm looking for here is about um, a really generous tablespoon of thyme. I'm going to chop up the parsley. Um, you can put about as much parsley in here as you want. It wouldn't hurt me one bit. I love the flavor of parsley. And I'm going to do about um, four tablespoons of parsley. And again, I'm not using the stems. I'm just trying to get as many of these leaves as possible. What's wonderful about this soup is you can throw it together really quickly and it will feed a lot of people. And I'll add these fresh herbs at the very last. So I just leave them out here on the cutting board until I'm ready to throw them in the container. Let's check on their veggies. Oh, they're looking good. I think I need to turn the heat down just a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my lentils. Now comes the real flavor. I'm going to add some of this vegetable stock, 32 ounces of vegetable stock, and then some of these tomatoes. Now what I've done here is I've taken whole tomatoes, whole canned tomatoes, and I just want to make sure that they're uh, pulled apart or cut, maybe cut in half or even quartered. And um, these are two 14 and a half ounce cans of whole tomatoes. I'm just quartering them and cutting them up. Break them up with your hands or cut them. So I think most of them have been broken up now. So we'll add those. And then I'm going to add um, one 14 and a half ounce uh, can of tomato sauce, 12 ounces of roasted red peppers. And look at the big pieces. It's very rustic, the soup. So I'm, I'm not a, afraid to use these large pieces like that. All right, mixing all that together. And then to add just a little heat, um, these are some little habaneros that um, came out of the garden. And I'm telling you, they are really, really hot. So I'm just going to break open uh, one of these and, and um, chop it up a little bit. And these things are so hot, I'm only going to use one and I hope one's not going to make it too hot to eat, but there's a lot of soup in there, so one will probably be just fine. So I want to make sure that these uh, pieces are really, really small, so I'm going to mince them. And then I'm going to finish it off with uh, about a tablespoon of salt and then I can salt it later to see how it, how it tastes once all this cooks together. Okay, now I'm going to take the herbs and go ahead and just throw those in on the top here while this cooks. Okay, so I'm just going to cover this up, let it cook for about 35 minutes and uh, until the lentils are tender. And this is enough soup for, for 12 people. And as you can see, it's really easy to make. And you can, you can add lots of different things. So be creative, make it, make it your own. This is a wonderful way to use lentils. If you're like me, you like anything that's sort of interesting and curious. And in the world of vegetables, this is one of my favorite, well, curiosities. 
This is an asparagus bean, and it's an Asian variety, and I've grown it for years, but I just think that it even has ornamental qualities in the garden. You can see I have just a few plants growing up this teepee here in the vegetable garden. Now what's interesting about this plant is that these lovely little thin tendril-like beans are delicious stir-fried. You can cook them in many ways, but you want to pick the bean when it's really tender like this. As they age, they become very long. In fact, up to 18 inches long or longer, as you can see here. Now this is getting a little too long to eat because they become tough, but if you want to save seed, the seed will mature inside this pot and you can plant them next year. Now let's talk about planting them. You'll find that asparagus beans love full sun, they love just a good basic garden soil, and they want to be planted once the soil temperature warms up and they grow very quickly. In fact, these plants were just planted 45 days ago, and you can see they're loaded with, well, all stages of beans ready to eat. Now, one last thing about this plant that I think is very interesting, it has a beautiful flower. It has a bluish purple bloom that looks very much like a sweet pea. If you wanna grow something interesting and delicious in your garden, you might try some of these asparagus beans. It's always fun for me to create an enjoyable experience for my guests. It starts with the food, of course, and conversation, but the tableware, decorations, even a buffet, well, it can even add a special touch to an event you might be having. So I just want to show you how you can create an interesting tablescape or a buffet without actually using flowers. In this case, it's all about beans and lentils and things. I've used red beans and garbanzo beans and split peas and lentils, and this is gonna serve as the backdrop for this buffet. Let me show you some of the other elements that I'm integrating into this. So over here, I brought in from the garden some of these cabbage heads and some of these gourds that ripened, oh, about a month or so ago. I'm just gonna tuck these in around the base of these jars of beans. And by the way, if you don't have these apothecary jars, you can use anything like a glass vase for flowers or even this kind of interesting vase that I found. I have it filled with soybeans, which are also delicious to eat. So anyway, you get the idea. So I'm finished with these. Let me go ahead and bring a few more of these decorations over. More cabbages and more of these gourds just to kind of integrate along the front. And you can see I'm following a very green theme and we'll get to that in just a moment. Now to serve the food on, you may want to elevate things. So I'm using some of these plateaus in the way of cake plates, like this big white cake plate works here, here's another one for here. And I'm mixing up some of this milk glass and the white. And hey, I may wanna put dessert down here, so I'm gonna put this one like that. As you can see, I'm following a theme here of basically taupey browns, but lots of white and lots of green. And that's where this kitchen towel comes in handy. These were bought at a discount store and they're to be used in the kitchen as, well, drying cloths. But you can fold them like this. They make great napkins, or you could even use them as a placemat. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a full complement of flatware, a knife, a dinner fork, a dessert fork, a soup spoon, and a small spoon, and I'm just placing them on the napkin like this, and I'm rolling it, binding them tightly together, like that. And then I'm just taking a piece of this wired burlap ribbon and I'm just gonna do a single knot here. Like that. And I cut the ends of the burlap with just a jag tooth like that, just for a little extra style. Isn't that great looking? So here they're stacked up here and I'm gonna use these plates, which are some of my favorites. And you can see the color here works really well. This has a grape leaf motif and it's got this sort of taupe that you see in the garbanzo beans and the lentils there. So this ensemble really works well as a buffet in the kitchen. People can gather up their food, place it on the plate, and go sit down at the table and have a wonderful time together.
Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I gotta tell you, I'm totally inspired by beans. There's so many varieties, we just scratch the surface, and there's so many ways to enjoy them in our food. Well, until next time, good eating and good health. <laughs>